And I believe that each and every one of us, we were ministered to by the Lord today. So, sino dito, you are excited to receive more. Amen ba doon? Sabihin mo sa sarili mo, I am excited. But before we proceed, let me just give you a few reminders na restreaming of our live stream is not allowed. So, whether it may be on your Zoom meetings or maybe sa YouTube, or sa Facebook. Dito lang po tayo. You can find our stream at g12philippines.net. And you can, ano, press nyo lang yung live uh, stream button natin. And let's really enjoy kasi ako, I believe that the Lord is really preparing something for you tonight. Amen ba doon? So I want you to declare, the Lord has something for me. Tonight. Amen ba doon? So sabihin mo dyan sa katabi mo or sa mga kasel mo, chat mo na sila. Handa ka na ba? Okay ba yon? Handa na ba ang lahat? Okay, so I know no, na lahat naman tayo dito, we are aware na we are in the midst of pandemic. A lot of us, we've experienced, probably naka-experience ka ng madaming victory. Uh, for those who are less fortunate, you've experienced defeat. Some of you actually, you've experienced loss of a loved one or even loss of passion or dreams probably. Some of you, you feel stuck. Kaya tuloy nagiging unproductive na tayo. Some of you, siguro, uh, you were at the verge of giving up. Some of you, maybe you feel like you're replaceable na hindi kaya naman nila yan kahit wala ako. Let me tell you this, God knows your battles. Kaya bago tayo magsimula, gusto ko lang sabihin that I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad na lumalaban ka pa din, kaya saludo sa'yo. <laughs> saludo sa bawat sa leader, sa bawat first timer, sa lahat ng watchers natin. You are doing a good job and I believe the Lord is happy that you are here. You know what? The Lord knows your efforts. Amen ba doon? Alam ng Lord ang struggles mo. Alam ng Lord yung mga bagay na nagbring ng pain sa mga puso mo. So, ito yung mga unspoken battles natin. Yung mga silent battles natin. The Lord knows it all. Kaya tonight, I want you to declare that God is speaking to me. Okay? God is speaking to me. And as God is speaking to me, lalapit din tayo sa Lord. Amen? Lalapit tayo sa Lord hindi bilang leader. Ako hindi bilang preacher, hindi ako hindi ako dahil uh, campus leader ako, no. Hindi tayo lalapit sa Lord with any titles. Lalapit tayo sa Lord with a birthright. And what is that birthright? Being a child of God. The Lord is speaking to you tonight, not just as a Lord, pero as a Father. Kaya I want you to declare this, that the Lord has a word for me tonight. Amen ba doon? He is healing me. He is strengthening me. He is comforting me. Amen ba doon? Ready na ba kayo? Ready? Alright. Because bakit nga ba mag, ano tayo, mag-aaral pa tayo ng word tonight? Because you know what? The world will always try to shut up who you truly are. Amen ba doon? Sino alam mo dito, merong natutulog na warrior inside of you? Sino dito alam mo yun? Diba? Maybe a lot of your situation, it made you feel na ate, Parang di naman. Ate, parang uh, ang dami ko nang na-experience sa failures. Ang dami ko nang nagawang hindi maganda. But I am telling you tonight that the Lord, uh, the world may try to shut up your calling or shut you down. But the Lord's voice over your life can never be silenced. Amen ba doon? And we're gonna be studying from the book of Judges, chapter, chapter 6. This is the story of Gideon. So I think a lot of us here, are aware of the story of Gideon. Pero itong story na to, this speaks about how his people was experiencing oppression for many, many years. And then, bakit ba't, na, ba't ba nila na-experience yung oppression na yun? Because they did evil in the eyes of the Lord. Tama ba yun? Sabi, dun, sabi yun sa Judges 6, di ba? Pero ano nangyari? Nagkaroon ng turning point yung life ni Gideon. And how did that happen? So kung makikita natin dito, si Gideon, he was a man who felt defeated. Kung makikita natin, he was a man who thought he couldn't do anything. He was living in oppression, both inside and out. Tama ba yun? Sino dito medyo nakaka-relate ka? Ate, parang ako din yun. Feeling ko defeated din ako. 
Tapos, dumating sa point na tuwing may declare ang Lord sa kanya, ano sinasabi niya? Pardon me. Laging excuse me. Ah, uh, talaga ba? Parang ganun sa atin eh, no? You know what? When God declares something in your life, huwag ka mag-excuse. Huwag mo excuse sarili mo. Huwag mo disqualify sarili mo. Because when God speaks, it is final. But the reason why that that voice becomes uh, seems silent, Kasi you are living in oppression. And alam nyo ba, as I study this, meron palang two kinds of oppression, no? So first one is oppression that comes from the outside. So kung makikita natin sa story na to, yung people daw ni Gideon, ano nangyayari sa kanila? Yung, yung harvest nila, nakukuha. Yung, yung people nila, nagiging slave. Dumating na sa point, sa cave na lang sila natutulog. Bakit? Kasi they were oppressed, oppressed from the outside. And maybe ikaw makaka-relate ka dito. Maybe ikaw, ate ako yun, may mga external factors din ako. Like may daming arguments sa akin yung ibang tao. Ate, I'm also lacking in finances. Meron akong challenges. Meron akong lack of skills. But let me tell you this. This outside oppression can be dealt with through the power of God. Amen ba doon? Yung fear that caused you to hide, yun, yan, yan yung mga arguments, yan yung mga things that caused you to turn away from the Lord, yung busy schedule mo, yung fear of failure mo, the, that can be solved through the power of God. Kaya I want to encourage everybody today, if you are living in a life of oppression, it's time for you to overcome. Amen ba doon? Pangalawa doon is, the oppression that comes from the inside. So, dito tayo medyo magdidig deep. So, eh, dito, makikita natin si Gideon, nung kinakausap siya ng angel ng Lord, and ng Lord, meron siyang disbelief. Why? Because he had arguments on himself. Alam mo, kapag dumar- dumating na sa point na marami ka na masyadong arguments sa sarili mo, kahit na ba yung angel na ng Lord yung nagsasalita sa'yo, kahit na ba ang Lord na nagsasalita sa'yo, feeling mo hindi pa rin totoo. Bakit? Kasi ikaw na mismo yung oppress mo na yung sarili mo eh. ba? Diba? What did Gideon feel? He felt helpless kasi sabi niya, ano nga eh, hindi kami tunulungan ng Lord eh. Akala ko sabi sa ano, sabi ng mga ancestors namin, tutulungan kami pero hindi naman nangyari yun. So he felt helpless, walang tulong na rumarating sa kanila. Pangalawa, he felt powerless because he couldn't do anything. Why? Because he was the least sa tribe nila. Tama ba yun? And then pangatlo, what did he feel? He felt nameless. Nameless in a way na nakalimutan niya na kung sino siya. Binrandan niya yung sarili niya as the least of his tribe. Imbis na binabrandan niya yung sarili niya as a child of God. Binrandan niya yung sarili niya na least kasi ganito lang ako eh. Maybe some of us here na experience natin yun, no? Ate, hindi ako natulungan ng Lord eh. Diba sinisisi mo ng Lord? Ate, wala akong magagawa kasi ito lang ako eh. Ate, ano ba magagawa ko eh? Ako lang to. But you know what? God is telling you today that it's time for you to overcome your oppression. You know what Gideon's turning point came? When? When the angel of the Lord came to him while he was working. And I want you to know that the turning point of your life will come as you work. So dito, makikita natin sa story that the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon as he was working. And from there, ang Lord nag-instruct na sa kanya. Nung naalala ko ako din po before, I was also, ano eh, I was also like Gideon. Na parang, ah, ayoko dyan kasi alam ko, least ako sa family ko eh. Diba? Pero you know what? What the Lord has spoken over over my life that time. Anak, kahit ano pang i-declare mo sa sarili mo, pero mas matimbang pa din ang sinasabi ko sa'yo. I want you to know na yung sinasabi ng Lord laging mas matimbang sa sinasabi mo sa sarili mo. And tonight, we will be learning kung ba, paano ba natin i-awaken yung mighty warrior inside na yan. Excited ka ba? Okay, so number one. To awaken the mighty warrior, you need to ask for God's favor. So how did Gideon ask for the favor of the Lord? He spoke to God. Unang-una, yun yung ginawa niya. Kung mapapansin nyo, their conversation went like this. The angel of the Lord appeared kay Gideon. 
And then sabi niya, ano, ikaw daw ay mighty warrior. Tapos ano sabi ng ano sabi ni Gideon? Sabi niya, ah, ex- pardon me ah, pero kasi akala ko dun may promise ang Lord para sa ancestors namin. Pero ngayon, we are living in oppression. And alam niyo ba, nung declare ni Gideon kung ano ba yung promise ng Lord, which is to save their people, alam mo nangyari, sabi dun sa verse, the Lord turned to him. So what does this say to us? When we speak to God, when we want God's favor, you need to get His attention first. When you want God's favor, you need to get His attention first. By what? By declaring the Word of God. By speaking the Word of God. Kapag ka ba ikaw kailangan mo ng favor ng Lord, ano lumalabas sa bibig mo? Yung prayer mo o yung promise ng Lord sa'yo? Kapag ka ba may kailangan ka, ano lumalabas sa'yo? Yung iniisip mo o yung sinet ng vision sa'yo ng Lord? And then ano yung next yung ginawa? He offered something. Sabi niya sa Lord, Lord, kung ikaw talaga yan, please stay here. Don't go until I come back. Tapos alam mo, sabi ng Lord sa kanya, I will wait for you. Because that's what happens. When you offer something to God, He waits for you. Gusto ko yung tinuturo sa amin ni Bishop for the past few uh, days and weeks actually. He's talking about an offering. Yung offering na complete. Minsan kasi tayo, Lord, you offer ko sa yung family ko, pero yung personal life ko, Lord, wag yun. Lord, you offer ko sa yung Lord, yung ano ko, yung ministry ko, pero Lord, pwede ba yung love life ko? Ako na bahala doon. Mga kapatid, there's no such thing as freelance sa relationship mo sa Lord. Kaya nga, ang ganda ng sinabi dito, oh, He asked God to stay. When you are offering something to the Lord, inaas mo pa ba siyang magstay Or inaas mo na lang siyang mag- mag-wait? Ang ganda ng turo ni Pastor June kanina, no? Na we need to remain in Christ and Christ remains in us. I remember this verse that when you remain in me and I will remain in you. Ang ganda ng verse na yun, no? Minsan kasi tayo, Lord, Remain ka sa akin na Sunod ka lang sa akin. Pambira. Si Lord pa yung pinasunod mo, di ba? Parang, parang baliktad kapatid. Sunod ka sa Lord. Siya magdadala sa iyo kung saan ka dapat. That's how you get the Lord's favor. You speak to Him. You offer something and you ask Him to stay. You get His attention. And mga kapatid, I want you to remember that when you are preparing something for God, wag na wag kang aalis sa presensya niya. Check mo yung ginagawa mo, baka mamaya, Lord, para sa, sa iyo tong grades ko, pero habang ginagawa mo yun, nagsisinungaling ka na, hindi na buo yung integrity mo. Diba? We must remember that when we offer something to the Lord, it is a relational response. It's not a responsibility lang. Yung ginagawa nating offering sa Lord, dahil An- uh, anak tayo ng Lord. Dahil ama natin siya, we don't give out of responsibility, we give out of relationship. Amen ba doon? So after you ask the Lord for favor, pangalawa, you build an altar. So pagka, pagka, pagka offer ni Gideon kay Lord, sabi sa kanya ng Lord, build me an altar. And alam nyo ba, ang maganda dito, no? When Gideon built the altar of God, he used the things that used to dishonor God to build a better altar. And what does that say to us? Yung mga bagay na na ginamit ng uh, ginamit mo to, to dishonor God, one day God will use that to bring honor to Him. Kaya yung mga experience mo before, Ako din po personally, I have so much ano, bad experiences, bad testimony. Kasi nga po, sa, isa po ako talaga sa pinaka, ano, pinaka makulit. Actually, I think sa, sa amin po magkakapatid, ako po talaga yung pinaka mabait. Ay, pinaka makulit, sorry. Ang pinaka mabait po si ate. <laughs> Andito po kasi siya, tsaka leader ko siya. <laughs> Joke lang. De, pero ayun po, what, what I learned here, sabi ng Lord sa kanya, kunin mo yung bull, tsaka yung pole. gamitin mo yun para i-build yung altar ko. So when you build, you build what you have. With what you have. And when you build, you build it for God. Tapos, pag nag-build ka, dapat mabilis. Mag-obey ka kaagad. You cannot build an altar ng tatamad-damad ka. 
Hindi pwedeng lalamya-lamya pa ka. You know, God wants you to build His altar with what you have and who you are. Hindi niya, hindi niya gusto yung ano, Lord, kasi hindi pa ako perfect. No. Let the Lord work in you, through you, for you, so that you can build a good altar. And when you build, ang purpose niyan is to honor the Lord. Huwag kang magbibuild ng kahit ano na hindi mag-honor sa Lord. Kaya i-check mo yung sarili mo. Yung mga relationship ba natin nakakapag-honor sa Lord? Yung ministry ba natin nakakapag-honor sa Lord? I like what Bishop also taught us no, nung nakaraan na do your, your best to present yourself as one approved. Ang ganda nung verse na yun. Kasi hindi pwedeng magbibuild ka para sa Lord tapos pasado lang siya sa standard of men. When I build, I build according to the standard of the Lord. Amen ba doon? And then number three, you need to protect your calling. When Gideon obeyed sa instruction ng Lord, alam niyo ba kanibukasan, pinersecute agad siya. Kinaumagahan actually. And you know what? That is how fast the enemy wants to destroy your altar to the Lord. Ngayon at ngayon din. Kaya sino dito, ano? Lord, kung kailan ba naman ako nag-serve sa'yo, tsaka pa nagkaroon ng problema. Di ba? May mga ganun pa tayong thinking. Eh, Lord, kung kailan ba naman ako naging committed, doon pa nagkaroon ng problema. And this is why you need to protect your calling. Because the enemy will always try to steal, kill, and destroy. That's why it's so important for you to have the right culture. Dapat, ka, dapat meron kang tamang environment. You surround yourself with the right people. And alam niyo ba tong si Gideon, how did he protect his calling? Number one, he went to the right people. Nung hinahanap si Gideon, alam mo nangyari? Yung tatay niya lumabas. Sabi, niya, sabi ng tatay niya, o kala ko ba God si Baal? Kung, kung God siya, ba't di niya protektahan yung sarili niya? Di ba grabe, no? Ginanon niya yung mga taong galit kay Gideon. Kaya tuloy, imbis na patayin si Gideon, binranda na lang siya. And alam niyo, it's the same with us. A lot of the times, what you go through will not kill you, but it will brand you of something. ba? Diba? Yung ano, yung, yung life natin, it is not easily taken away, pero it is easily tainted kapag ka ikaw, wala kang tamang tao. Tapos kung makikita niyo dito, Ano din eh, nung nagbibuild si Gideon ng altar, sinama niya yung ten servants niya, right? Meaning, when you protect your call, dapat may kasama kang tamang tao. Hindi lang sa pag-protect sa'yo, pero pati sa pag-build. Kaya you never build on your own. Amen ba doon? Ano sunod niyang ginawa to protect his calling? He called upon the power of God. You know, do you know what caused the power of God to come upon Gideon? It is his obedience. It is his integrity. It is his longing. Yung boldness niya. Pag nag obey ka sa Lord, wag yung ano, Sige Lord, mag obey ako, pero secret lang natin ha. Kaya tuloy, hiyang-hiya ka mag, ano, mag-share ng, ng service niyo. Di ba? Sino dito, online service na nga lang, late ka pa. Di ba? Ano ba yan, friend? Hindi. <laughs> Pagka nagsuservice tayo, dapat on time. Di ba? Sino dito, gusto mo? Kasi masyado ka na siguro na sana eh, pagklase, no? Klase ko, 8. 8 a.m. So, gigising ako 8.05 kasi may grace period pa naman. No! You bring the right culture wherever you are through the discipline you develop in your relationship with the Lord. Kaya sabi nga dito, eh, dapat meron kang tamang tao, dapat meron kang uh, tinat- hinihingi mo sa Lord, Lord, please let your spirit come upon me and then you obey immediately. That's how you, you protect your calling. You know what? God is not attracted with what you say. Pero it is what you do. It is what you sacrifice. We were having a primary meeting this Tuesday, last Tuesday. And si Bishop, inas niya kami, what makes a good offering or an honorable offering? Tas, tas lahat kami nag-iisip. Tapos ako nag-iisip ako, sabi ko, siguro yun yung kapag kayong best. Tapos alam niyo ba, nakuha ni ate, kasi nga po siya yung pinakamabait sa <laughs> Nakuha ni ate yung tamang sagot. Sabi niya, uh, Dad, I think the best offering is yung kapag walang natitira sa'yo. Alam nyo, if you want to awaken the warrior within, you need to fully get rid of the strong man in your life. 
yung strongman na yon, hindi pwedeng nagre-remain yan. Bakit? Because it says in the Bible that the old has gone and the new has come. Sabi doon, end. Hindi sinabi doon, the old has gone while the new is coming. No, end. Nung umalis yung, ba- yung luma, dumating yung bago. Kaya don't expect yourself to be awakened kung andun ka pa rin sa nakaraan mo. And why do you need to awaken that warrior within? Kasi yan yung declaration sa ng Lord. Yan yung declaration sa atin ng Lord. You are a mighty warrior. Ate, ang hina ko. Ate, iyak nga ako ng iyak recently eh. Meron akong uh, mga friend before. May nag- nag-undergo sila ng season. Ang tanging advice ko lang sa kanila, sige, umiyak ka. Pero you make sure pag iyak mo after nun, mas malakas ka na. Kasi di ba, luging-lugi naman tayo, umiyak ka na, mahina ka pa din. Umiyak ka na, talunan ka pa din. No. Iiyak ako pero lalakas ako. Iiyak ako pero di ako susuko. There will be times that I will be sad, pero I will not give up. Kaya kapatid, I want to urge you, it's time for you to get out of that oppression. And kung makikita natin, Gideon and his people went out of oppression. How? When Gideon awakened the mighty warrior within. And that mighty warrior, yung turning point ng life niya na yon, hindi lang naman siya yung naapektuhan nun eh. Pero it is also the people na nakasama niya. It is also the people na nakasurround sa kanya. Sino dito alam mo na when you get out of oppression, may maapektuhan. A lot of you here, we came from a uh, ano, broken family. Meron kang kilalang depressed or may anxiety. Diba? Parang, parang ako before, I was also oppressing myself eh. Inside and out, as in, I, I saw how people were judging me. I saw how I judged myself. Nagde-declare na ako ng pangat sa buhay ko. Bakit? Kasi akala ko yung sinasabi nila sa akin, yun na yung truth eh. But in reality, the truth of who you are is in God. It's not in what you did. Amen ba doon? Sino dito alam mo, the truth of who I am is not in what I did. It is who God is in my life. It is who God declare in me. Kaya kung sino ka man ngayon, huwag mo isipin na ate, parang ang dami ko nung kinawang mali ate. Ilang beses ako nag-fall ate. Ang dami kong pagkukulang. But let me tell you this, it is not who you are right now, pero it is who God set you to be. Kaya kung meron mga things na na-declare sa'yo, or ikaw mismo nag-declare ka sa sarili mo ng mga maling bagay, kapatid, it's time for you to receive your turning point. And if you are going to receive your turning point, let it be now. Wag mo nang patagalin yan. Gideon's life was turned around the moment he responded to God. And alam mo, kapag ka ikaw nag-respond ka din sa call ng Lord, nag-respond ka din sa sinabi ng Lord, hindi lang sa'yo ang impact yan. Pero pati sa family mo, sa school mo, sa org mo, yeah? meron ba dahil dito mga taga-org? Meron tayong mga taga-student council dito? Alam mo, when you turn your life around, everything in your path, magkakaroon din ng change doon. You know what? There are times that you will feel like you're the least, pero one day, I'm telling you, one day you can make a difference. Diba? Gusto ko yung, again, tinuro din ni Bishop, no? May isa siyang disciple, sabi sa kanya, Bishop, one day mapagmamalaki mo rin ako. And gusto kong i-declare mo din yun, one day mapagmamalaki din ako ng Lord. No matter how broken you are, one day mapagmamalaki ka rin ng Lord. One day mapagmamalaki ka ng leader mo. One day mapagmamalaki ka ng family mo. Why? Because you go out of that oppression and you embrace the mighty warrior within. You awaken the mighty warrior when you kill the strong man in your life. Tatanggalin mo yun. Yung nakaraan mo. Yung, pa, yung mga sin mo. Kasi yung pagiging list mo, hindi yan ang inasign ng Lord sa'yo. The Lord has declared that you are more than a conqueror. The Lord has declared that you are made in His image. Kaya wag mo hahayaan na ganyan ka lang. The Lord doesn't want you 
to end in oppression. Yung oppression mo, hindi yan ang ending mo. Stepping stone mo yan for you to realize who God is in your life. And I want you to read with me a verse in Exodus 14.14. And a lot of you, maybe, maybe you know this, no? Pero I want you to declare this to yourself. Sabi doon, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. In this pandemic, ang dami nating battle. And some of you, gaya nga nang sabi ko, maybe pasuko na kayo. Maybe ate, um, parang di ko na kaya. Ate, I tried. Pero siguro mas okay pag wala ako, pag hindi ako yung gumawa. But you know what? Let me tell you right now that it's time for you to get out of your oppression. Let the Lord fight for you. Let the Lord fight through you. Let the Lord fight with you. Let the Lord fight for you. It says in the Bible, it is not by might nor by strength, but by the Spirit. And sabi doon, declares the Lord. Ang Lord ang may decree nun. Meaning, Kung gusto mo mag-overcome, dapat meron tayong partnership with the Lord. Kung meron kang ide-develop na culture ngayon, i-develop mo is yung partnership mo with the Lord. Diba? Hu- huwag ka masanay na ikaw na lang lagi yung nire-rescue. Ako kasi before gano'n ako, ako nalang laging pinapan- <laughs> ako laging pinapanalangin. Feeling ko nga, feeling ko nga buong church namin, in-evangelize ako. Choke lang. <laughs> diba? Yung family ko, alam ko, ang dami, ang dami nila siguro prayer na, ano, inalay para sa akin. And you know what? A lot of people are also praying for you. A lot of people are also wanting you to go out of your oppression. Hindi ka naman pinupulis eh. Ate, ba't mo ba sa akin pinapatanggal to? May pinapatanggal sa'yo kasi may pinapapuntahan sa'yo. Kaya may pinapatanggal sa'yo kasi punta ka na raw dun sa ibang lugar. It's hard for you to travel. Sige, try mo. Tara, jogging tayo. Dalin mo yung buong sound system na itong led wall dalin mo habang nagja-jogging tayo. Ewan ko lang kung saan ka makapunta. Ganun din sa buhay. If you want to go from one level to another, there are things that you need to give up. And for me, ang dami ko din give up noon. May give up akong friends. May give up akong mga dreams. May give up akong mga thinking. May give up akong mga plans. Pero ano yung kapalit nun? Hindi ako nalugi. Kasi when I gave myself up, I earned a partnership with the Lord. And gusto kong makita nyo yung importance ng partnership ng Lord. Yung partnership natin sa Lord, eto yung magtatanggal sa sa oppression. And for those of you who don't know kung ano ba ibig sabihin ng oppression, let me paint you a picture. Oppression makes you forget who God is and so you forget who you are. Meaning, sa sobrang oppressed mo, takot na takot ka na lagi. Nakalimutan mo na kung sino ang Lord. Nakalimutan mo na kung ano yung kaya niyang gawin. In, through, and for you. It makes you forget ano ba yung calling mo, ano ba yung tamang spirit na meron ka, ano ba yung mga tamang decisions. Tapos, dahil oppressed na oppressed ka, oppressed na oppressed ka, lagi ka na lang marami excuses. Ate, sorry, busy ako. Ate, sorry, ano, um, huwag mo na ngayon. Ate, magpapahinga lang ako. Pero let me tell you this, in your resting, you rest in the Lord. You don't rest in the world. Because the world will offer a lot to you that will seem like rest, but actually, it is eating you up. Ano pa ginagawa ng oppression? It makes you fearful. Kaya tuloy, takot ka sa future mo. Meron kang survival mentality. Nagiging selfish tayo. Ang, ang dali nating bumitaw kasi alam naman natin, ano eh, bitaw ako kasi kailangan ko i-save yung sarili ko. No. Being oppressed means you remain where you are and where you are will lead to death kapag wala ang Lord dyan. Huwag ka mag-focus sa kung nasan ka, mag-focus ka sa kung sino ang kasama mo, which is ang Lord. Remain in the Lord. Kapag ka may oppression ka, nakakalimutan mo na yung plano sa'yo ng Lord. Sino dito, alam mo, nag-declare sa'yo ang Lord. Anak, di ba magbubuo ka ng cell? Di ba magkakaroon ka ng 12 ng 144? Pero dahil may oppression ka na, 
again, survival mentality. Yung grades ko, I want to take control. Kailangan ko i-control yung area ng life ko na to kasi I'm overcompensating for the things I cannot control. But let me tell you what, with the things that you cannot control, that is where you should surrender to the, to the Lord. Kapag di mo na kaya, surrender mo yan sa Lord. Huwag mong panghawakan. Huwag mong panghawakan yung hindi mo kaya. ba? Diba? Parang ano, parang mainit na, na, na kawali. Pag mainit yan, bitawan mo. Para makapag-heal ka. Para maayos ulit. Hindi yung masakit na, alam mo nang hindi mo kaya, tapos inoopress mo pa yung sarili mo. Shucks, ang init naman nito. Bitawan mo, hindi, mainit eh. Gusto ko to eh, mainit siya. Hindi ganun. If you want to get out of oppression, you need to let it go. Because oppression will also make you forget kung ano ba yung dineclare sa'yo ng Lord. Kaya tuloy, hindi mo na naiisip na mighty warrior ka. Ano ba yung dineclare sa'yo ng Lord ngayon? I want you to remember, Lord, ano nga ba yung dineclare mo sa'kin? Lord, ano nga ba yung, yung sinabi mo sa'kin? Diba, ate, this year kasi ang dami nangyari, ang daming nawala. Diba, yung, yung mga support system ko, Lord, nawala. Itong isang to, siya na nga lang yung katuwang ko, nawala pa. Pero let me tell you this, those who stay are those who are supposed to stay. Kaya kung nawala siya, isurrender mo yan sa Lord. Huwag mo nasisihin sarili mo. Huwag mo nasisihin yung pagkukulang mo. Hindi yun yun. Kasama lang yun sa plano ng Lord. Kapatid, stop oppressing yourself. ba diba? Parang si, ano, si David, he had this prayer sa Psalm 13. Sabi niya, I'm hurting Lord. Will you forever, will you forget me forever? ba? Diba? Sino dito may ganong ka na prayer? How much longer, Lord, sabi niya dito, will you look the other way when I'm in need? How much longer must I cling to my constant grief? I've endured this shaking of my soul. So how much longer will my enemy have the upper hand? Let me ask you this. How much longer will you stay in your situation? How much longer will you stay oppressed? How much longer will you think that you are the least? Ang dami nang dineclare sa'yo ng Lord. Ang dami nang sinabi sa'yo ng Lord. Kaya ngayon, it's, stop, it's time for you to stop fighting. And it's, start, it's time for you to start to be still. Be still meaning, alam nyo ba pag still kayo? Try nyo, upo kayo ngayon, sige, pikit kayo. Pikit kayo, tapos upo lang kayo, just feel the presence of God. Pansin nyo, mas aware kayo. When you are still, it makes you aware of your situation. It makes you aware of God's move. Tapos, stillness, it also makes you calm. Kaya tuloy, hindi ka na nag-overthink. Yung anxiety mo na ma-manage mo na, yung mga arguments mo. When you are calm, you silence your fears. Kasi nga, still ka in the Lord eh. It also makes you quiet. ba? Diba? Kapag ka still ka, naririnig mo yung sinasabi ng Lord sa'yo. Try mo yon. Huwag ka magsalita, pakingin mo lang ang Lord. Pero alam mo yung best part doon, yung hindi ka nagsasalita. Makinig ka lang sa Lord. Pakinggan mo lang yung instruction niya. Diba? Huwag mo lang pakinggan yung promise niya. Dapat ready ka din makinig sa rebuke. Sa correction, Lord, ano nga ba yung promise sa akin? Remind mo ako. Diba? Hindi pwedeng ganun. Huwag mo lang i-ask ang Lord na i-remind ka ng promise niya. Lord, also guide me. Because I know whatever promise you have given me, there is also a process with that. Kapag ka still ka, it makes you think better. So, nagiging strategic ka, nagiging wise ka. And lastly, stillness makes you rest. In your stillness, as the Lord fights for you, dun ka, magpahinga ka. Pahinga in a way na hindi mo, yung ate magpapahinga ako kaya hindi ako maglilid ng cell. Hindi yun ang pahinga. Ano ang pahinga? Yun yung nagre-remain in the Lord ka. Keep doing what you're doing. Gaya nga ni Gideon, yung turning point niya, the angel of the Lord appeared to him while he was working. Kaya if you want the Lord to appear to you, maybe kapatid, it's time for you to work again. Dami mo masyadong arguments sa sarili mo. But the only thing to remember here is the Lord fights for you. Kaya I want to declare this over your life. You are not helpless. You are not powerless. You are not nameless. 
Why? Because you are with God and He is your help. You are empowered, meaning you are in par- partnership with the Holy Spirit. You are not nameless. Why? Because you are a child of God. Ano ang identity ng Lord? You know what? He is the greatest conqueror. He conquered death. He conquered everything in this world. Diba? Pero bakit pinipilit mo parang lumaban ka mag-isa? Diba? Ako din po ganun eh. Kasi ano ko eh, strong independent. Kunwari, kol- hindi choleric ako. Pero akala ko independent ako. Pero yun pala, arrogant na ako. Akala ko independent ako. Yun pala, hindi na healthy yung independence ko. Nagpapaka-strong na lang pala ako. And I want to speak to those people. Yung pagod na pagod ka ng lumaban. It's time for you to stop fighting and let the Lord fight for you. And as the Lord fights for you, bumelo ka so you can awaken the mighty warrior in you. Kaya ngayon, no, I want you to be in an atmosphere of worship. So wherever you are, I just want you to close your eyes. And listen to the Lord as He speaks to you tonight. You know the Lord fights for you? He fights for you because He cares for you. He loves you because you are His child. And it's time for you to awaken the mighty warrior within. Kaya ngayon, let's be in the atmosphere of worship. Just declare that, Lord, I'm for you.